All right, welcome back to the Waynesburg University Sports Network. There's Isaac Stamatiatis scoring the first two points of the game. Or not the first two points of the game, first two points of the half. We're in the second half now. This is the Waynesburg University Sports Network. I'm Nicholas Callis. That's Jack Hillgrove beside me. We also have Andrew Rhea at the table who's tweeting out stats and other information for us on the WCTV and Lucent. Waynesburg University Sports Network Twitter page. There's a block there by Westminster. That ball goes out of bounds, stays with Waynesburg, but Tyler James, the one on the block there for Westminster. There are seven seconds on the shot clock for Waynesburg University. Briston Bennett will inbound to Ryan Felberg. Screened by Alonzo Felberg looking for space. Three seconds on the shot clock. He's being double teamed. Felberg underhanded layup, no good. Rebounded by Stamatiatis and taken back by Westminster. Here comes Leone inside. He loses possession of the ball. It was knocked away by Bryson Wilt. And goes out of bounds. The score of this game right now, 38-23. Waynesburg University trailing Westminster College. Westminster ended the first half on a 23-6 run against Waynesburg University. And they've gained a 15-point lead. There's Tyler James inside the arc. He's got two more points. Tyler James had eight in the first half. He's now in double digits for the game. He has ten total his first two of the second half. And... Westminster ex extends its lead, 40-23 to is the score. There's Bryson Wilt, top of the key, being guarded by O'Hara. Inside, there's Isaiah Alonzo, who makes the basket, but according to the official on the floor, it's no shot. There was a floor foul on Tyler James, his second personal. Westminster now has one in the half. Uh, Waynesburg University struggled toward the end of that first half. And Westminster now is up 17 points on Waynesburg University. Bryson Wilt will inbound. Wilt to Felberg in the corner. Inside to Alonzo being double teamed. That's O'Hara trying to guard Alonzo, and he does it successfully. Here comes Westminster in transition. Tyler James off balance, layup no good, but rebounded by Daniel Ritter, and then he put up the shot. That's good. Daniel Ritter, six total now, his first two points of the half. And Westminster even further ahead now. It's 42-23. There's Wilt being guarded heavily by Ritter. Wilt fakes a shot, then takes one off the front of the rim, bounces a few times on the rim, and doesn't go in. So it's a rebound by Tyler James, and now Westminster on offense. There's O'Hara. Top of the key, Austin O'Hara, brother of Dylan O'Hara, reigning PAC Player of the Year, only the second in Westminster's history. There's Leone dribbling now. Reese Leone being guarded by Ryan Felberg. Can't find space, so he passes out. There's James at the top. Tyler James being guarded by Alonzo. Tries a shot over Alonzo, but it hits off the rim. No good. Rebounded by Ryan Felberg. And now here comes Waynesburg on offense. Felberg inside spin move, but a whistle stops play. And that looks like it'll be a charge call. An offensive foul on Ryan Felberg. His first personal. Waynesburg now has one in the half, and that'll... Allow Westminster to take possession. Isaac Stamatiatis entering this season had 737 points. And over the first couple games for Westminster this season, Stamatiatis scored 37 as Waynesburg gets possession again. But he's on the fast track to 1,000 points if he keeps up his scoring totals over the last two seasons as Alonzo makes a layup. That's nine points for Alonzo now. A good contact and able to get it to go. Hi, Nick. I Hi, Jack. I haven't talked at all this half. No. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we wanted to make you guys aware. There's a good steal from Waynesburg. We wanted to make you guys aware that we're totally aware of the issue. We've been notified from all of you guys, and we appreciate the support about the – so our audio is ahead of the video. Um, that's an issue with our internet connection, and it's in no way affiliated with our production trailer. And unfortunately, internet is internet, and we can't do anything about it. So we apologize for it, and we appreciate the patience and all that fun stuff, and we appreciate you guys watching. A uh, ton of good feedback thus far, but just wanted to make you guys aware of that. Go ahead, Nick. Bryson Wolf caught on the foul, his third personal Waynesburg, two and a half. Out of the game comes Bryson Wilt. Again, five is the foul out, so Wilt out after receiving his third. And Matt Popek back into the game for Waynesburg University. Inbound coming from Leone inside. Stamatiatis off the backboard and good. Stamatiatis leads all scorers now. He has 13 points in the game, has four this half. And Waynesburg now trails 44-25. 
16 and a half minutes left in this second half. Yeah, he's one of the better interior players in the conference. And I look over at buddy Andrew Rhea, who kind of just like nodded his head and <laughs> was just like, he's good. But so is that guy. You talk about interior offense and defense. That guy on your screen there, number 20, is also as good as it gets in the conference. And he, it takes him, he's one of those players that, you know, you give him a bucket and then another bucket and he starts to heat up. Watch out because he can, he'll, he'll, he'll beat you inside, you know, physically on the blocks, and then he'll stretch it to the baselines and the extended elbows and things like that, and knock down jump shots too. And he's one of those players that if he can get cooking and Matt Popek can get cooking like he has been proven time and time again in the last couple of years that he can do, that this team's going to be really fun to watch this year if they can get it going. Stamatiotis with it now for. Westminster pass out, the shot is up and good. That's a three-pointer for Daniel Ritter, who has nine points total. Now that was his first three of the game, and Westminster now up 20 points on Waynesburg. Through the first half of the first half, the score was close, but Westminster jumped out to a lead on a 23-6 run, and they've kept the lead, and they've made the deficit grow further as Isaiah Alonzo missed. Yeah, Westminster wasn't itself for the first. There's a good move. The first couple of... Uh, rather, the, a lot of the first half, they shoot 49% from the field, 49% from three, and it just has kind of taken them a while to get going. Felberg, top of the key now. Ryan Felberg, the sophomore. Over to Matt Popek. These two on the same court now. Felberg replaced Popek after Popek got injured last season and only played two games at the beginning and then missed the rest. There's Felberg again with the ball, fakes a pass. Now inside to Popek. Popek getting into the side of the paint, tries a flailed shot that didn't. Make it anywhere toward the hoop, that's no good. Rebounded by Westminster. Now here comes the pass into Daniel Ritter who fakes a shot. And that was good, he deceived Jansen Knox who jumped over Ritter, but Ritter makes the shot. That's 11 now for Ritter. So there are a few scores now in double digits for both teams. Andrew Clark, Daniel Ritter, Isaac Stamatiotis for Westminster, and Isaiah Alonzo, the only Waynesburg player in double digits for point total right now. Alonzo trying to fight past Tyler James. And another Westminster defender, but yeah, the whistle stops play. The foul reported. It's Austin O'Hara who gets called with the foul. Or no. Nope. Yeah, Austin O'Hara with the foul. They wanted a foul, or rather a travel call. Oh, there's department chair Richard Krause sneaking up the stairs in the left corner of your screen. He's been very supportive of us getting everything underway. But no, they wanted a, a, an Isaiah Alonzo travel, and it wasn't so much a travel as much as it was he got knocked over and fouled. Austin O'Hara has his first personal foul. Westminster two team fouls now. Some fouls have come quickly in the second half for both teams. Matt Popek misses that shot, and the rebound goes to Tyler James. And Westminster will transition to offense. Here comes Andrew Clark inside under by the baseline. Now passes out to Daniel Ritter. Takes a shot. That's good. Daniel Ritter been on a hot streak in this half. He's made... Let's do the math here. That's nine points for Daniel Ritter in this second half. He's made one three, the rest were two pointers. And now a timeout called. 14 10 left in this second half. I mean, right now it's been, it's been Westminster really commanding the show here. Isaiah Alonzo is the only person, the only player for Waynesburg who scored in this second half. He has four points. For Westminster, they already have three scores in this second half. Ooh, I made a mistake too. Tyler James is also in double digits. He scored eight in the first half. He made a bucket here in the second half. He's now at 10 points. So the scorers, Daniel Ritter has 13 points, as does Isaac Stamatiotis. Tyler James is at 10. Andrew Clark has 11. They're, they're all in double digits for Westminster. And for Waynesburg, again, the only player in double digits right now for scoring is Isaiah Alonzo, who has 11 points. And going back to Isaac Stamatiotis and some of his dominance throughout his career, last season he scored 416 points. And that gave him 737 total. So if he gets anywhere close to 300 this season, he'll be in a 1,000-point score for Westminster, one of the many recent players that has been quite successful for this Westminster club. As for Waynesburg, it's been different. Waynesburg's club not so experienced anymore with a few prominent upperclassmen graduating at the end of last season. There's a young crew here. Head coach 
Tim Fusina recruited about 20 players to the program. And this is the first game they've played as a group. It's the first game of the season. The roster's up over, what, 20, 25 guys? Good save there by Isaiah Alonzo. Gave Knotts another chance to make the basket, but Knotts couldn't make use of that second opportunity. Now Westminster in possession and contested possession there as a pass was high in the air. One out of bounds off of Waynesburg University, according to the officials. So Westminster will get an inbound from the baseline. This is the first time that uh, in a while, I, it has to be several years that Bobby Fox had to throw JV schedule and JV roster up on the as tabs on the basketball's webpage. Fusina has recruited so many players to the team, so the numbers are good. It's definitely something you want to see, especially as a second-year coach. Tyler James missed. There's the rebound by Matt Popek, but he didn't have control of it. Now here's a contest on the floor, and a whistle stops play. That was. Daniel Ritter who jumped on Matt Popek. He didn't go for the ball at all, made contact. He jumped on Matt Popek. So that'll be called for a foul. Daniel Ritter has one personal foul of the game. Westminster's up to three now in the half. Just above 13 minutes left in this second half. Waynesburg trails 51-27. Here's Felberg. Ryan Felberg being guarded by Reese Leone. Felberg now drives, left lane, tries for the basket. And the shot is blocked, but a whistle stops play. And we'll see the reported foul. It's on Andrew Clark of Westminster, his first personal. Westminster now four team fouls in the half. And that'll be called a shooting foul, so Ryan Felber will go to the line. And he'll have his first two free throw attempts of the game. He's at two points in the game. He made one basket in the first half. That first one rattles around a bit and misses, so that's no good. Ryan Felberg, a sophomore this season. Twinsburg, Twinsburg Ohio is where there he's you see, from. There you see the replay. Good take. He's able to get open and drive the lane. Second one misses, so both free throw attempts no good. Rebounded by Tyler James, and Westminster will make it back to offense. There's Reese Leone over to Tyler James. Top of the key, back to Leone, being guarded by Felberg. Leone moving in, he puts up a shot off the backboard, missed the rim altogether, but Andrew Clark scoops it up for Westminster inside. Stomach to Otis, don't want to get in his way. That's been the Achilles <laughs> heel, uh, with the uh, also the exception of Westminster just heating up from the floor, but a lot of tips and a lot, a lot, a lot of offensive rebounds today for the Westminster Titans. Up over 15 offensive rebounds, 15 of them. There's Jake Benhart fighting to the hoop, but that's no good. Rebounded by Isaac Stumatiatis. Yep. And there's Daniel Ritter now taking it across court. That's another thing Westminster does really well too through their first two games is just out-rebound the heck out of teams. Their rebound margin coming into the ball game as they're up 15, I think 16 after that Stumatiatis rebound. 18 and a half is their rebound margin, plus 18 and a half. Reese Leone from beyond the arc, he makes a three. Yep, and then again, you combine that with just shots falling from everywhere, it's it's tough It's tough to compete with for sure. There's Ryan Felberg. Waynesburg down 54-27, it's nearly a 30 point game. Once it was back and forth, Westminster went on a run toward the end of the first half and now they have a lead that's well exceeding 20. Whistle blows stopping play. The ball went out of bounds off of Westminster, so Waynesburg will get an inbound. That's Ryan Felberg. Out to Matt Popek for three. He got it! Matt Popek, his first three since last season. Waynesburg now cuts the deficit a bit. It's 54 to 30. Matt Popek now five in the game. He made it two in the first half. And makes a three to start his scoring here in the second half. But prior to today, the last time Matt Popek scored a basket and played in the game was November 16th, 2019. Tyler James on the basket there for Westminster. There is Waynesburg back on offense. There's Ryan Felberg to Matt Popek. Popek being guarded by Reese Leone as Waynesburg tries to run a play. Well, compared to last season, too, Waynesburg's looked more 
well finessed with their passes and getting players into open space as Isaiah Alonzo they are. makes that basket. They are, and it, you know, it also doesn't help too. I mean, Westminster, like I said, they're rebounding it well and they're shooting it well, especially in the second half. But the offense you know, just looks so much more smooth. Exactly that. And there it is again, Andrew Clark. But it doesn't matter how good a team is versus another team. Westminster coming in and already playing two games, this being Waynesburg's opener, and especially all these new guys not really playing together on a, in a game. Hey, that Alonzo! Works. That works. But like I'm saying, like it doesn't matter how good a team is versus another team. You have two games on a team versus a team's opener. That's a huge advantage. Isaiah Alonzo, his first three of the game, first three of the season. He's up to 16 points now. He's leading Waynesburg scores. And Andrew Clark made a three in that. Well, hold on for a second. <laughs> there are threes dropping rather quickly. So while this timeout's called by Westminster, we'll, we'll go over the scoring that just happened. So Andrew Clark made a three in that sequence of scoring. That was his fourth three of the game. He's up to 14 points now for Westminster. Then Isaiah Alonzo got open space. He made a three, giving him 16 points, his first three of the game. And then the the most recent scorer there was Daniel Ritter for Westminster, who responded with his own three. He's up to 16 points now. So there are a few double-digit scores for both teams. Again, if you're enjoying our content, like I enjoyed that Matt Popek three ball that Jeremiah Miller just threw into the program. Check out more of it right here on our YouTube page, WUDP. You'll find shows about sports, news, politics, entertainment, and a whole lot more. Any suggestions, contact our department, rather our faculty advisor, Melinda Roeder, at mroeder, R-O-E-D-E-R, -E -E at waynesburg.edu. And, of course, our department chair is Richard Krause. He's in attendance today, supervising the production from a faculty standpoint. You can email him as well, R Krause, K R A U S E at Waynesburg.edu. Oh. Here's Westminster pressing again, but Waynesburg finds open space, not panicking, now getting on their offensive side of the court for this half. There's Popek. His last basket was a three. Inside, there's Alonzo being guarded by Stamatiadis. Alonzo spins around but can't make the basket, so Stamatiadis gets the rebound. Stamatiadis in double digits now for rebounds. He has a double double today. And we'll talk more about double-doubles with him in a minute. But first, there's Anthony Ritter. His first points of the game. It's a three-pointer. It's now 65-35. It's officially a 30-point game now. And there's Waynesburg cracking on offense as a jump ball is called. Contested possession. No, I lied. There's a foul called. It was not contested possession. A foul will be reported. It just depends on who. So 12 is the reported foul. Will Helton for Waynesburg caught on the foul. His second personal, Waynesburg's second of the half. So Westminster will get an inbound on their offensive side of the court. But uh, Isaac Stamatiadis, this is his third straight game now to start the season. He's gotten a double-double in all three games he's played in this season. He's quite the force to be reckoned with. Here's O'Hara, big pass out to Stamatiadis, but... It missed Stamatiadis, went to the hands of Anthony Ritter, and Ritter put it up for two. Five points now for Anthony Ritter, all scored in this half, and it's now a 67-35 lead for Westminster. Matt Popek coming up the floor. Popek inside, triple teamed as he tries for that basket. No book. Good, but even amongst three, he gets his own rebound, puts up another shot, but uh, he couldn't make it. So no points for Waynesburg on that possession. Here's a three again made by Andrew Clark. Andrew Clark, 5-3, 17 points total. It's now 70-35. Waynesburg down by 35 points. Popek into the corner. There's Alonzo. He can't make that shot. And rebounded by Alex Mullen. Westminster continuing to pull away from Waynesburg University. You're watching men's basketball here on the Waynesburg University Sports Network. I'm Nicholas Gallus, Jack Hillgrove to my left, and Andrew Rea running our social media. He's on the right. Got a large crew here today bringing you the game. As that shot blocked by Ryan Felberg, the attempted shot was by Anthony Ritter. He gets the rebound, though, passes out, and the shot missed by Austin O'Hara. And while Alonzo came down with the ball, the whistle stopped play. Wow. A lot going on here. But no fans allowed in the Rudy Marisa Fieldhouse this season for basketball. 
So you can rely on us and WCYJFM, our affiliate radio station, to cover all jacket basketball this winter season. Matt Popek got taken out of the game, and in is Jake Scheidt, another freshman on this Waynesburg University team. Felberg over to Ben Hart to Scheidt. Back to Ben Hart, back to Scheidt. Now Waynesburg on offense. Waynesburg's been struggling to score within the last 20 minutes of this game toward the end of the first half and beginning this second half. Here's Felberg. Ryan Felberg from deep. He made it. Ryan Felberg for three. Absolutely. Win. I just missed that three call, too, by the public address announcers and all of the, all of the excitement that's gone on here. Popek for three. Ryan Felberg for three. You know, it's going to be a busy, busy semester when it comes to sports. We have the winter sports taking place now. Well, the spring sports in the uh, in the spring. And uh, also the fall sports. And a big shout-out to Dan Hott, member of the Waynesburg soccer, men's soccer team. He's watching the broadcast, giving us some love. He says, would love to see this for Woo Footy when I come back to play in the spring. And Dan... We're going to move the trailer down to Wiley anyway for football. Yeah. There will be football going on at the same time. So it's definitely not out of the question, my friend. We will definitely kick the wheels on that too. And potentially, we're going to get, again, RPC video down here, Bob Hawk and the, and the crew, to potentially do something that Waynesburg University, the sports network, has never done before. And this will get you excited. Got to see how it works out. No guarantees, but a baseball broadcast yes. could be on the horizon. I yes. wanted to make that my goal. If I, as a spring semester senior, getting ready to graduate, just in case I don't fail anything, which I shouldn't, hopefully. <laughs> well, I, the <laughs> stamp that I want to leave on this department and on this network. Let's do the first baseball broadcast. Let's let's make it happen. We're gonna do everything we Dude, can. Dude, I like soccer too enough to do soccer too. So soccer, baseball, we'll, we'll anything. Like, yeah. There's Andrew Clark. That's no good. So back to Isaac Stamatiotis. Just to remind you again, he has 13 points, 18 rebounds. That qualifies him for a double-double. And he has achieved a double-double in the first three games of this season. And Westminster has played only three games as a foul is to be reported. So Isaiah Alonzo was down there trying to make the basket. The foul caught on Isaac Stamatiotis. Hold on, it wasn't Stamatiotis. Uh, I believe they called it on Kai Skinner. So Kai Skinner yeah. is first. Westminster does have five in the half, and Isaiah Alonzo will get two free throws. That appeared to be a shooting foul. The first one is up and good. Alonzo with 17 points. Also, a quick update for you as well. Joe Venzel and Caleb Yager had the call earlier. Normally, in, in a COVID-free world, we have double headers for you of, the, of these basketball games, but to limit, as Alonzo makes the second one, to limit the amount of people in a gym, the Waynesburg women played at Westminster today. They tipped off at 1.30. The final score, Westminster 65. The Lady Titans take down our Lady Jays, 65-58. It, the the women now fall to 0-2 on the young season. Yeah, everything's so unique this season. Look at that. Big block. That was Wilt who got a hand on that ball and smacked it away. And then as a shot attempt went up, a foul is called. So the foul called there on Will Helton of Waynesburg University, his third personal foul. That's Waynesburg's third team foul of the half. But uh, yeah, back to the unique circumstances. Both teams can go to the locker room, but they're trying to be so safe that the referees can't even go to the locker room yeah. at halftime. They have their own designated corner with three chairs. You actually see it in transition here, but yeah, they have their own corner by the wall where they have to stay and they can't get in contact. They can't get in close contact with any of the student athletes. Yeah, and, and, neither, and neither can we. And normally you get into a mood, or not a mood, but it's one of those things where when you're setting up for these broadcasts that we do, you're running around the gym like a madman and you're yeah. not really paying attention to where yeah. an athletic director, Adam Jack, and assistant athletic director, Randy Pettit, said, you know, make sure none of your guys are going over near the Westminster guys because they just tested negative for COVID. So we can't have you, and it's obviously, you know, something you definitely got to do, but. Can't contaminate the clean pool. No, exactly, exactly. And you got to abide to everything and keep everybody safe because if 
We want to keep doing this, which we do. Be as safe as possible. Jake Schreit missed that shot. Now Westminster on offense, and the most recent foul was called on Andrew Clark. Westminster now has 16 fouls in the half, and Clark has two personal. Shot up, and that'll miss. No good. Rebounded, though, by Clark. Feeds it out to Isaac Stamatiotis. Another three for Stamatiotis. Stamatiotis has three points now. I'm oh, sorry, excuse me, three three-pointers in the game. He's now 16 total points. And Westminster continues to lead this game at 73-40. to 40. Jake Benhart went up for that shot, but a whistle stops play. A foul called on Andrew Clark, his third personal foul, and Westminster now at seven fouls in the half. So that was a shooting foul, so Benhart will get two free throws out of it, but now Waynesburg is in bonus time, so any foul committed by Westminster on the floor or a shooting foul will result in at least a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Waynesburg University. Benhart's first shot is good. And not to pull a Chris Collinsworth, but Jake Benhart. Here's a guy <laughs> driving the lane and taking the foul. You see it on your screen. But Benhart's a guy with Division II experience. Played his freshman year of college at Division II Edinburgh. Transferred to Grinnell College. That's where he played last year. And this year he finds himself a jacket. Listed at 6'5 on the roster. Talking to some of these guys. He's one of those guys that if he can get going from three, if he is not automatic because you don't want to go you know that far but he's he's one of those three-point dead-eye guys and once he can get going he adds something that can you know throw an extra pretty nice variable into your offense so whistle stops play here after that second free throw was made Jake Benhart taken out of the game perhaps and like a guy like Nate Gearhart chucking him up from three and letting him fall Jansen Knotts back into the game for Waynesburg University. Jansen Knotts, a six-foot-four freshman on the team. I'm the one of these freshmen that's getting experience. Good move made there by Leon, but he can't make the shot. And after that play, a whistle stops play. Now, and Leon is going to be a really, really good player for the Westminster Titans for the next four years. He's averaged coming in 13 and a half points per game in the first two games. He's only a freshman from Beloit, Ohio. But he's going to be one of those guys that'll be, you see him there on your screen, number five, as Helton goes to the line. Going to be really, really good for Kevin Soroki in the Westminster Titans. Found himself a good one. Also to uh, Andrew Clark, who's made a, what, a trio of three-pointers in this game, too. Oh, no, more than that. Made five three-pointers. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that, that there, there you go. There you guys go. Jack's behind on the scorecard. <laughs> But, uh, okay, on that play, the foul called on Daniel Ritter, his second personal. Westminster's up to eight now. That's why Will Helton went to the line. He got a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, but he made his first, so he got the second. He made his second, now has two points. His first two points of his college career, as a matter of fact. Waynesburg trails 73-44. Inside, there's Austin O'Hara. Excuse me, O'Hara, and that one's good. O'Hara now at four points in the game. His first two and a half scored on that basket. And Westminster... Extends its lead, 75 to 44 is the score. Here's Bryson Wilt, bounce pass. There's a shot from Jansen Knotts, that's no good. Rebounded though by Will Helton. Helton passes out to an open Bryson Wilt, shoots a basket and that's no good. Good positioning on Helton. Was able to recognize the opposite block. Usually the, the rebounds go from the opposite trajectory of where they're shot. My dad taught me that at a young age, playing basketball. Yeah, you're, Andrew Rhea knows, opposite <laughs> block, youth basketball 101. No, but it works. And he got the offensive rebound. It's a shame that the Jackets couldn't capitalize, but they get a miss here, and they're in transition. Tyler James missed. That's Jake Scheidt passing to Isaiah Alonzo. Alonzo has the ball, double team, tries a bounce pass, but it's stolen away by Molin. Pass inside. There's Daniel Ritter. Out to Molin, to O'Hara. That's another thing, now too, Leon has it. Nick. Neither team, Westminster nor Waynesburg, have been pretty good at, like in transition. They're either, and I don't know if it's the transition defense that's been good from both teams, or rather if that, like, you know, these two teams, when they transition in offense, are kind of just not disorganized, but, you know, a little bit. all Not all over the place, but disorganized a bit in transition. But that's, again, one of those things that gets a little bit more fluent when you play more. Bryson Wilt with it. Top of the key. Waynesburg trailing by 31 points. Inside to Alonzo being double teamed. Wow. 
Heck of a pass over to that side. Bryson Wilt was the intended pass receiver. That got knocked away by Westminster, so Waynesburg will inbound on that far side. And they call that a skip pass. And that did a little bit more than skip. I think it was like a skip and a half pass. <laughs> what, what, left corner to right wing is about as far as you can get. But if anybody can do it, it's the guy that's six foot ten with super long arms. Freshman Jansen knots inbounds. Now there's Alonzo pass into Will Helton. Will Helton got spooked a bit. Touched the ball last as it went out of bounds. He was double teamed there. Two Westminster players went for the ball, but it went out of bounds off of Will Helton. So Westminster will inbound and move to the offensive side of the court. To their offensive side of the court, I should say. But here's Leone with it now. Maurice Leone with it on the right wing. He passes across court inside. Tyler James had space inside, and he takes advantage of it. Another basket for Tyler James. He's up to 14 points now. He has six points in the half. And Westminster now up 77-44. Just under three minutes left in this second half. A three from Will Helton. That's no good. Rebounded, though, by Isaiah Alonzo, who finds enough space to get it off the backboard and in. And that's the advantage of being tall on a basketball court, just able to put up a shot over everybody else. 20 points for Alonzo now. And it's 77-46, Waynesburg trailing. Pass out, there's O'Hara. O'Hara inside, bounce pass to Ritter. Daniel Ritter couldn't make the shot, he got blocked. And the bench is clear for, well, well, in a good way for Waynesburg, not in a fight way, but they're gonna get a, a wholesale change coming in here soon. Now there's a block there by Westminster and they get possession back. 77-46 against the score. And a timeout called by Westminster College. Two minutes, 10 seconds left on the clock in regulation of this game and Westminster in heavy control of this game. They're up by a large margin, 31 points. Now there's Tim Fusina, the head coach of Waynesburg University in his second season. Now we've already previously mentioned, but just to mention it again, he recruited 20 players this offseason, uh, not only transfers, but freshmen as well. You hear the song, Nick? Oh, yeah. Uh, you're going to hear, you hear it about 30 Finding times West. tomorrow on television watching the Super Bowl. What's? Oh, it's, I love this song. Uh, it's, it's a good song. It's, it's so overplayed. What are we... Um, what are we, what are we setting so our over-under line tomorrow for the Super Bowl for this song? Like, throughout the entire day. Andrew Rhea is up here. What do you... What do you 30. 30? 30? Okay, we're going to go with, what, 29 and a half for Blinding Lights tomorrow. And a half. We're going to count, and we'll let you know. Cold and empty. No one's around to judge me. Okay, nobody asked you to sing, buddy. <laughs> but there you have uh, Waynesburg <laughs> University. What, what, giving us thumbs down, <laughs> Professor Krause. What, 24? Is that what you think? Uh, <laughs> Professor Krause thinks 24 times tomorrow for Blinding Lights. But, uh... Now, the, the wholesale changes coming in for the Waynesburg Yellow Jackets. Fletcher Hartsock, Zach Ford, Bryce Washington, Joey Caruso into the game as well. As this one is in the waning minutes. Uh, shot up no good. Shot taken by Kai Skinner. Fifth guy on, out there is Noah Johnson, the freshman from Trinity, number 13. There's Bryce Washington. Inside pass now out to Bryce Washington again. And Westminster Washington over to Hartsook, over to Washington. Westminster bringing in a couple of guys off the bench as well, coming in here. And that shot no good, rebounded by Westminster. A minute and a half remaining in regulation. There's Alex Mullen, drives, and he tried to make the basket, but no good, he got fouled. Uh, that's a shooting foul. Foul called on Waynesburg's Noah Johnson, his first personal. Waynesburg now with five team fouls in the half. Mullen's first shot is up and good. That's his first point of the game. It's now 78-46 Westminster still in the lead. Alex Mullen, a six foot three sophomore on this Westminster team. From Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, he puts that one up. So he's two for two from the free throw line. Also checking at number three, Deion Thomas. And with that, a whistle stops play. So some substitutions. Some more substitutions coming in for Westminster. Waynesburg's five on the floor stay the same. And 
The voice mister now in the game, Jordan Zupko in the game, number 24. As Zeppo went out of bounds off of Waynesburg. This game winding down seems pretty secure that Westminster will win and remain undefeated through its first three games of the season. Which is a third of the season. Yeah, not only nine games. Yep. Every PAC team will play an opponent once. They've got ten teams, so nine games. And then all ten teams will make playoffs. So there's, I guess that's an expanded postseason, although I don't know what they would have done anyway because Franciscan was scheduled to come in, so there would have been even teams with ten. Last year there was only nine, but with Franciscan that makes it ten PAC yep. teams. Yep, so everybody plays each other once. Yeah. And another thing, too, you got to give Coach Fusina a lot of credit. Not only is he recruiting in bulk, but you got guys coming in, and, and Gary Gray, who just made the shot score, and he's going to try and convert here. This guy's from Houston, Texas, coming yeah. to Greene County to play basketball, and you got some other guys, too. Uh, Carlton Brown from Riverside, California, is a transfer from California Lutheran University, which is where Coach Fusina was before coming to Waynesburg. And recruiting it well locally, too. Ronnie Zeiler from Bethel Park. Uh, Will Helton from Hollidaysburg is somewhat local. Noah Johnson, who's in the game, from Trinity. Well, Gage Hendrickson just made that basket, his first two points as a college basketball player. So that's why the Westminster bench Erupted a bit more loudly than usual. So and then another guy uh, who was getting ready to come into the game, if he can, he's at the scores table, Jordan Tompkinson, a transfer from Concordia, went to East Grand Forks. Where is he from? East Grand Forks, Minnesota. But we got another first scorer again, Noah Johnson. Just made that basket for Waynesburg. And that'll so pretty he got much his first two points. So a few players in this game for both sides getting their first collegiate points, a few underclassmen, a few freshmen. Doing well, and that'll do it. 81-52, the final score of this game. Westminster College beats Waynesburg University in Waynesburg University's first game of the season. Westminster now 3-0, Waynesburg 0-1 to start the season. And we'll take it to a break. We'll come back with some summaries of this game, some brief analysis, and then our conclusion. So stay with us. This is the Waynesburg University Sports Network men's basketball. Welcome back to the Waynesburg University Sports Network. I'm Nicholas Callis, Jack Hillgrove with me. We've reached the final score of this game, 81 Westminster, 52 Waynesburg University in this men's basketball game. Waynesburg played well early throughout the first 10, 15 minutes of this game, but then Westminster at the end of the first half went on a 23-6 run, uh, took the lead, and then really never looked back from that. They continued to score, and Waynesburg uh, did pretty well on offense in the second half, but they didn't do enough to overcome Westminster's good performance in the in the second half of the second half or second half of the first half. So uh, Westminster wins this game by a rather large margin, uh, 29 points to be exact in this game. Jack Hillgrove with some summary statistics for you. Yeah, we'll get you uh, the individual stats here right now. So first we'll go with Waynesburg, who falls to 0 1, 52 total points today. They were led by uh, 20 from the leading scorer last year, Isaiah Alonzo. He's pretty much the only one that stands out. Felberg, Knotts, and Popek, and uh, with five, just those three with five points. Uh, check that rather. Uh, no, it is just those four with five points, and then a couple of buckets from Helton, Wilt, Gary Gray at the end. Johnson hit a three. Uh, and that is the scoring for Waynesburg and for Westminster. They had four guys in double figures. Andrew Clark with 17. 16 from Daniel Ritter and Isaac Stamatiotis. 14 points from Tyler James. Five points for Reese Leone. Five for Anthony Ritter. Four points for Austin O'Hara. And a bucket each from Mullen and Hendricks at the end. So total, uh, rather team stats, Westminster shot at 41.7% from the field. Waynesburg shot at 30.5%. Westminster 42.9% from three, 12 of 28. Waynesburg was 6 for 20 from three. Good numbers from the free throw line from both teams. Waynesburg 10 of 12, Westminster 9 of 11. Here's the glaring number, though. Westminster 50, that is 5-0 rebounds, 20 of them on the offensive end, out-rebounding Waynesburg 50 to 30. Two ties, only one, uh, two ties from each team. Waynesburg led it once, Westminster led it twice, and led it for 33 minutes and 19 seconds. That's 83% of the game. 
The largest lead at one point for Westminster was at 35 points. The largest lead for Waynesburg at one point was six points. That was back in uh, the first quarter, rather the first half. I'm doing quarters again, 11-24 <laughs> to go. Westminster, 21 assists. Waynesburg, 8. Turnovers, 13 for Westminster, or rather Waynesburg, and 10 for Westminster. Westminster had 26 points off the bench. Waynesburg had 20, and... Uh, Possessions were just about even, 69 for Waynesburg, Westminster, 68 for Waynesburg, and that are your, those are your big numbers. Again, yeah, well, Isaiah Alonzo really not skipping a beat from last year, led the team in scoring 20 points. but He led everybody in scoring. Yeah, that's that's about it. I think yeah. the, the next highest score for Waynesburg was five. So a, lot, a yeah. big hill to climb, a lot of work to do for these Waynesburg Yellow Jackets, but they got eight games left to do it. They see everybody once, and if they can get things clicking, uh, I don't think this final score that you see at the bottom of your screen right now is a good inclination of how good this team can be. No, they, Westminster shot it ridiculously well in the second half. Yeah. So well, you got Stummit the Otis, too, to deal with, and this is the third straight game now to start the season. That Westminster's only played three games, and he's had a double-double in each of the previous two games, and he had a double-double in this game yeah. in points and rebounds. So that's that's tough to deal with, too, for yep. a team that's still looking to get experience. Yeah, and that, that'll just about do it from us here. We will be back in about oh, a little over 48 hours. Monday night, we will be uh, right here on the Waynesburg University Sports Network broadcasting uh, Monday's game. And it'll be, I believe, the tip-off is scheduled for 7 o'clock. Or 6.30, yeah. I think. The men play at Geneva. The women will play Geneva at home. We'll have the women's game for you. And uh, I believe Riley Holsinger and Adam Morganti will be on the call. So a, couple, a little more than 48 hours, we'll be ready to go. And uh, we're happy to do it. Let's get, let's get some more basketball underneath <laughs> our belt. And, uh, again... If you're a Waynesburg men's basketball fan, this final score is not a reflection of how good this team can be. No, I see the potential for sure as well. Well, that's it from the Rudy Marisa Fieldhouse. A uh, special thank you as well to Bob and Jay Hawk from RPC Video for all their technical help. And for my partner, Jack Hillgrove, our producer, Matt Mansfield, our faculty advisor, Melinda Roeder, our department chair, Richard Krauss, and the rest of our Waynesburg University Sports Network crew. I'm Nicholas Callis saying goodbye and so long. Once again, the final score, Westminster College Titans 81, Waynesburg University Yellow Jackets 52.